Three times a week, this dirt field turns into training grounds for football players trying to get into condition for upcoming professional club tryouts. They come from Cameroon, Congo, and Nigeria, and come with varying skills and experiences. Effie is pursuing his first big contract. Michelle is trying to recover from a knee injury. Franklin has played professionally in several countries. The dust clouds, the noisy highway, the flimsy goalposts don't offer ideal training conditions. The scrimmages are frequently interrupted to recover the ball from the river. But the players make the best with what they have. After all, they have traveled thousands of miles to get here, all for the chance to earn a living by playing football in a country not known to be a football powerhouse. They are pursuing their dreams in Vietnam. When the last American troops left Vietnam in 1975, the country was one of the poorest countries in the world. Growth finally came in the mid-1990s when communist Vietnam started adopting some free market principles and emerged from isolation. Nowhere is Vietnam's growth more evident than in Saigon, where millions of noisy motorbikes have crowded out cheap bicycles and the old-fashioned cyclos. Vietnam is still a poor country, whereas the United States per capita income is over $47,000. Vietnam's is just $3,100. So what would entice people to travel all the way from Africa to play football in Vietnam? As poor as Vietnam is, it's still by some measures better off than many African nations. I feel Africa has the best players out of probably all the other continents. You know, there's a lot of talent, but the thing is, is they don't have a professional structure set up where, you know, everybody gets paid. You know, the, 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 cl the clubs are not run as professional as it, as it is in Europe and other countries such as in Asia. And the finance is not there yet. Nigeria's per capita income is $2,500, placing Nigeria 21 spots below Vietnam. The Democratic Republic of Congo is at the bottom of the table, with a per capita income of only $300. Football is Vietnam's favorite sport. As the country has improved economically, money has flown into its football league. Of course, its professionalism and money is nothing compared to Europe or even the U.S. Samuel Atoo from Cameroon, for example, made almost $14 million per season at Inter Milan. In 2011, Atoo became the highest paid football player in history when he joined Russia's Premier League for almost $29 million per season. But given the extreme competitiveness of European leagues and the immigration hurdles in the U.S. and Europe, Asia is attracting both experienced and aspiring players from Africa. Some players came here after being scouted by agents, but most came without any professional experience, without any contacts, without friends, or without knowing anything about the country or language. They borrowed money for the plane ticket and came with just a suitcase and the hopes of getting a club contract. It's a big gamble. Only a few will get signed by a club, but the gamble may be worth it. A foreign player in Vietnam's top league can make between $1,000 and $2,000 per month. That's much more than the average annual income in Congo. Effie came to Vietnam hoping to play in the country's professional leagues, but he has not been noticed by a club yet. So in the meantime, he plays for amateur recreational teams who want the new experience of playing with foreigners. Today, Effie and a few of his friends are joining employees of a local textile company for a pickup game. After taking three buses to the field and 90 minutes of play, Effie will earn almost $20. I play for lessons about four months now. About four months I play for them. You know, Vietnamese use a Vietnam name to call it, so it's hard for us to pronounce the name of the team. You've played so many games, but you don't know how to. I have the opportunity of playing here in Vietnam. I will play, I will try my best to score good goals. Get good tapes like the one you are watching on the screen now. Playing in Vietnam, just maybe for one season or six months, you know, just got six months, play maybe up to 14 or 20 matches. 
get good tape, then from there use that tape to get contracts in Europe, you know. Because you need the tape better, you know, good match match situation, a lot of crowd. And use that tape you can get contracts. I have a plan of going to Thailand. That is where my my mind, my heart, everything has. I got an invitation here with me. This is my petition. So when I went to the embassy for their visa, they refused me. They said, ah, Nigeria passport. I don't know why. So most of our f Nigeria, some of our friends just decided that they cannot wait any longer. Some of them tried to change their nationality to another nationality just to get a visa so that they can go continue playing. But I said, um, I don't want to do that. Because I started this game for long, and if I do that, it's going to affect me. That's why I'm still trying to pray to my God that God should answer me one day so I can go somewhere to start playing. Uh, in Thailand, they don't pay good money. They better not pay more than Thailand. But Thailand play better football than Vietnam. Thailand are playing good football, better football. Football you can, it, uh, a white man can watch in the Europe can give you a contract. Ah, this, this football is good. So I just use those, these games to keep myself fit, so that in case if I have opportunity to go to Europe, it will be easy for me. Frankie has played in Vietnam's top football league, the Super League, but his contract just ended, and he is thinking about moving to Malaysia, where there is a bigger television market. He hopes that being on Malaysian television will make him visible to sports agents. I've been here since uh, 2004. I make my money. And I'm quite proud to be in here and I make my name here, everyone know me and then it's such a good thing for me. I'm here for football but also to, know, to learn about culture because since I've born, I've never been in Asia, you know. Such a good thing, you know. And when I arrived here, I was a little bit impressed about motorbikes, you know, all over the way. You're going, you see motorbikes, motorbikes, it's lovely. It was a little bit, uh, I must say, it was a little bit, uh, difficult in the beginning because some they don't speak, some they do speak, and then those that you play with, they don't speak Vietnamese, they don't speak English, and it was like, if I need a ball, I don't know what to say, and then since that time, just pushed us to go and learn their language, like to ask a ball in their language, because to make you understand, you want the ball sometimes just to speak in the pitch, you know. Yeah, it was such a great thing, you know, to meet such a different culture, different people, you know. We always like, uh, when I was playing, like meeting like uh, Africans, you meet some people from um, like Europe, uh, England, America, over, over Africa, but here yeah, it's uh, dif different, you know. You should learn some culture in Asia when you meet them, to know them, something like that. I've been playing football since like uh, 12 years old maybe eight years old. And it just, it was tough with my parents because my parents, they wanted me just to be like someone in the office, you know, just have a pen every day or I think things, but you know, you never know, you know. They was thinking football doesn't pay, you know, because uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people like back home, like great player in Congo, they play uh, like a good team in the world, like uh, Motubi de Santos. He played for Marseille. I don't know which team he played, I just forgot. And then there's uh, some of my dad's friends, they was footballers. I'll give an example, like uh, one of the guy, uh, Lofombo, is uh, my dad's friend. And then, I'm sorry to say, it doesn't have a life today. But if you go in Congo, you ask about Lofombo, Everyone knows Lofombo is a world-class player. I mean, world Congo player, you know what I mean? He's a top player, but today Lofombo is no way. That time, my parents was thinking like football doesn't pay, and then it was like, if you choose that way, you should know that in the end of your career, you have nothing, you know? And then it was like, okay, I have to go. And then sometime when I was looking at my, all brothers, like my area old brothers, it was like, they play football, what they got, nothing. 
And then on me, I just, I didn't like believe on what they were saying, but I just loved the job, you know. That's I keep going, and you know, end of the day, my, before my dad died, he sees what I was expecting in football, like moving all over the places, you know. Sometimes, no matter, I can bring a shirt, I can bring a pant for my dad. He'd be proud since I've been back home in Congo. I never bought him something. But when I went to play outside, I came back, just a pain I bought him. He was proud, you know. Such thing that he chose something that he was expecting to get something from me, that's he's getting it. That's the way it happens. You never know who's gonna knock to the door one day to tell you, okay, you're here to come over. I came over here, I didn't know I'd be here. Nobody knows about his dream, you know. You wish your dream, but you never know what's gonna happen. That's the way it is. Michel used to play professionally in Nigeria and Vietnam. He was about to go join a club in Malaysia when he suffered a knee injury. After several months of rehabilitating his knee all on his own, without the financial help of any club, he is trying to get into shape for the upcoming tryouts. So I'm in Vietnam now. Uh, I hope to move forward. Back in Nigeria, I was playing professionally in Nigeria, and then at that time, everybody wanted to go out and play in Europe to get more recognition in the country and maybe to be able to play for the national team. I can't really say exactly uh, when I decided to come to Nigeria because I've been playing soccer all my life since I was a kid. Uh, so coming to play in Asia, Asia wasn't my ideal choice. You know, it just happened. Actually, it was my agent who advised me to come over and play here. Initially, I was, you know, skeptical about it, but later on, I was going to play in Malaysia at the beginning of this year, but due to the little injury I sustained earlier in the year, I couldn't get the deal done, so uh, I moved back to Vietnam. I think uh, playing in Vietnam is just like playing in Nigeria because the football is so hard and so strong and more running, uh, more physical football, just like back in Nigeria. Malaysia and, 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 and most especially in Indonesia, it's more, more advanced than in Vietnam. But in terms of physical play, I think Vietnam is strong too. Yeah. So I've been in Asia all through for over two years now. I'm still looking forward to go to Europe. Everybody wants to play in Europe, wants to make money, make money, and achieve goals, which is my dream. So I'm still working hard on that. Maybe if I could get the opportunity to go to Europe, maybe I can be as good as Van Basten because he's my hero, you know. And um, he scored great goals in his days. And I was hoping to get to that level by going to Europe, but unfortunately I wasn't able to go to Europe. So Asia became my first bus stop. To represent someone effectively, you need to be able to communicate to other people what their qualities and what their capacities are as a, as a football player. Most of the teams, they don't want to see um, a YouTube highlights because, uh, you know, highlights can be manipulated. You know, most of the clubs, professional clubs, what they want to see is they want to see a full game DVD of that player, one of the latest games, so that way their technical department or scouting department can actually decipher those videos and critique the player's ability. In West Africa, it's very difficult for a player to obtain any recording of a match that he's played in because, for the most part, the matches aren't televised, they aren't filmed by a professional crew, and so in most cases it's not possible for them to get anything at all. Um, and very often when you know they are able to get you something, it's not really all that helpful. I mean, it's something that's shot with one camera. The camera is on the sidelines or in the stands. It sweeps from left to right. It doesn't focus in or focus out. Often the resolution of the, of the image that you get is such that you can't even read the numbers on the backs of the players. And whether they're short or long, you can watch the thing and at the end of it feel it's been very hard for this person to get this to you. But though you've paid attention to it and studied it with as much care as you can, often I feel at the end of the exercise I know no more about the player than I did when I began the exercise. 
in terms of a, an African player who goes to Southeast Asia you know, in the hopes of transferring to Europe, once they get to uh, Southeast Asia, I think their hope is, and, and hopefully it turns out this way, that they're paid what they're promised to be paid, and that they earn more uh, you know, in a country like Thailand or, or, or Vietnam than they may get paid in their home countries. But European teams, for the most part, don't scout Southeast Asia. So the fact that the player is there and does well may not really come to their attention naturally, that is to say, by the team's own scouting apparatuses. There are a lot of African players in Vietnam these days. Mainly a lot of the clubs have gotten um, their business model together really well, so they've gotten a lot of sponsors. So technically, if you're top players and you can draw a big crowd, you can certainly make a lot of money in the, in the Vietnamese league. An agent could attempt to represent a player in helping him transfer from, from a team in Southeast Asia to a team, let's say, in Germany or in France. But again, that's not easy to do. In Congo, football doesn't pay much more, and I was always going to them for us. And then it was like the way they were catching me, you know. We want you to do this, you don't want just football, okay, we're not giving you. And then it's like sometimes, and I can't understand what they wanted from me. Today I can stop playing football. I got something to my head. It's just, I'm proud of my parents. I know, I understand now what they wanted me to be, you know. Whatever you choose to play football, you chose to play it, but after football got career, you know, today 26, after four, six, ten years, 36, you know, maybe it's gonna be my hand of career. And then after that, there is another life. I got a girlfriend soon, she's not my wife, or we have a family, and then I need something to look after our family. It's not about just playing football and I wanna be an agent or I wanna be a coach, you know. It can happen, you never know, but Head Heavy monsoon rain has been pounding Saigon for weeks, turning the football fields into slush and canceling all of Effie's pickup games. Their mentality about football, yeah. They said if you stay a long time, they look like maybe you don't know how to play. That is Vietnam mentality. That means that football is still backward. It's many things. Tired of the place, but I have to, I have to be it. When I got this, is a trophy I won in a competition. They give me this uh, frame, written my name on the middle. You can see it's my name is here, Obodi Ife, but I don't know what they wrote the rest in. So I just use those these games to keep myself fit, so that in case if I have opportunity to go to Europe, it will be easy for me. After weeks of monsoon rains, the sun is finally out, and Effie is looking forward to the match and to earning some much needed income. But he receives bad news en route to the grass field. The match is canceled because the last time there is an heavy rain. Yeah, he said, he said they are trying to see if they can get another good field to play. If they cannot, then we we'll forget about the match today. With the game canceled, Effie joins his friends at one of two restaurants serving Nigerian food in Saigon. Some enterprising Vietnamese family has converted their living room into an ad hoc restaurant that caters to the small but growing number of Africans. Michel got a contract with Anyang Football Club in Vietnam's first division. The club is not in Saigon or a major city, and the pay is a bit lower than in Vietnam's Super League but Michelle is visibly happy to be fit and playing professionally again. It's not all about where you play, but you gotta keep playing you know, while you can. Try to bring out the best in you at all times. So Maybe some other time in the near future. It's not my dream of coming to Vietnam. My dream is to go to Europe. Thinking about going back to Nigeria is like, uh, 
It's like I give up, you know. But I have to face it. That is why I never give up. <laughs>